Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 4, Episode 2. This is the first time I've had to recluse myself, and we will talk about that when it happens. I've thought deeply about this, and I have to just have no comments. Let's get started. And please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe. This is a really terrific Landscape Artist of the Year episode, as I said. Now, where they are is Viking Bay. And let's get an aerial shot of this. And if you watch documentaries or even dramas on TV, you have to have an aerial shot. It's The drone shot is now an essential part of all programming. <laughs> so there we are. It, so they're going to be on the beach. And there's going to be a pier with some boats. It's started as a sunny day and became a little bit overcast. So there's a, and you can see the pods in the foreground. So we have, I believe, eight of them painting today. And you can see that it's basically a seascape. Now, if they turn to their left a little bit, then they will see the pier and the boats. Now let's look at the paintings that they did in order to be accepted onto the program. And it's a very varied field, and so I was excited about this episode. First one is almost photographic in a way. I really like the drama of the dark and the light. They've captured the light, and the work in the sky is exquisite. Yeah, that's... That, that could be an exciting piece. We'll have to see what they do today. Now, remember, they aren't holding their paintings next to their pictures, so we don't get to really see what they look like. So it's harder to keep track of our different artists. This is a collage artist, and she uses fabric, so sewing is going to be involved. So that's going to be a time factor. I find it fascinating and kind of beautiful, but she is at a disadvantage because of time. It takes a lot more time to sew something down than it does to uh, mix something in paint and, and brush it on. Now, the next one is also quite dramatic. It's a nighttime scene. I've tried nighttime scenes and I've never successfully nailed it as far as my criterion. And I'm as tough on myself as I am on, as I am on these recaps. But that's a nice slice of a moment. So we have a mix of landscape and cityscape. Here is one of a pier. And it has some kind of architectural components to it. I see some triangles, some squares. This could be interesting. It certainly has a lot of detail and also texture. That will be interesting to see what this artist does today. And the next one is more of a cityscape. And I enjoy this kind of painting. If, if you watch my channel for any period of time, you, you know that that's the case. I like it when things have lost and found edges and when paint is applied generously. Yeah, you get a real good feeling of space from this one. So I'm looking again forward to what this person does today. Now the last, the next one and the last one is the one I'm going to recluse myself on. I cannot make a comment about this painting. I cannot make a comment about this painting for various reasons. And when we see what this person does today, I think you might feel the same way I do. Here's our next contestant. This is pen and ink. So this is painstakingly done. It, you really have to blur your eyes to get any sense of what the forms are in there. And again, we know this person's going to be at a disadvantage today. They're not going to have the kind of time that they had to do this. And here's the last one. This is uh, very, very colorful and I think works very well in this broad, almost sky view. I, I really, really like this painting, but I'm disappointed by what the artist did when it came to a close-up view that they did today. But we'll see if you agree with me or not. So let's take a look at today's paintings. Remember, they had four hours to work, then they have a lunch break, and then four more hours. They, except for the pods give them some uh, shade. But, you know, it could be a windy day, could be a humid day, could be a hot day. That, that is a little hard to tell. So this must be our pen and ink artist. I think that that seems fairly obvious. We, when we come in close, we can see the detail. And again, they did not have the time to do the work that they would normally do. So they'll be judged on what they did today, not on what they did do. And this looks, this looks fine. How you compare it to other pieces, I don't know. But the last pen and ink artist made it to the semifinals of episode one. 
yeah, here's another detail. Oh, the patience that it takes to do that. Yeah, I kind of used to be this kind of uh, artist, and then I uh, got much more interested in big shapes. I wanted to show this one because we get to see the artist and also because we get to see the scale of the paintings. It's, it's very difficult in some ways to recap this program as opposed to Portrait Artist of the Year. I don't yet have kind of the rhythm of when they show the images. Now here is the image uh, that he's working on and we can see that a little bit more close up. I believe this is the person that painted the pier. Yeah, I think it is, as his submission. Again, there's something kind of architectural and, and kind of based on triangles, squares. It, 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 even without knowing what these things are, there's some basic shape components that are, are really interesting to me. Now, let's take a close-up look. I, I think this moment is a really beautiful moment. You can almost see that the water has that translucent quality and almost looks a little bit wet. The moss along the bottom of the rocks looks like it might be moist. That, that's, uh, that's observation, and I enjoy that, and then the little figures as well. This is much more detail than I usually like, but I, I like the overall painting here. Here's another one where someone turned slightly, instead of turning to the left to look at the pier, they're looking to the right, so you can see some of the buildings and the cliffs of Vikings Bay. I, I, this is really beautiful to me. And look at the sky and the sea. This person really captured the way the weather was that day. So I suspect that this person probably goes out and does landscape painting quite a bit. Wow, there's real some precision in that. Wow. I, I, wow, I really like that. Oh, now here's the person who had that really robust color and showed us sort of that drone shot. But I don't think it works here. I don't think these color value swap outs work and, and don't produce space for us. It's kind of visually confusing to me. So I am disappointed by this one. And it, it, for me, it just looks like a rainbow exploded. It doesn't work for me. Here's the, another one. You see why I'm not going to comment about it? I, do, I don't see a difference between this one and the person's submission. Uh, so I'm... Yeah, I've thought hard about it, and I'm just not not okay with the fact that this person uh, was accepted in and took someone else's place. And also that that this is comparative to what the other folks are doing. It's just puzzling to me. So I said I would recluse myself, but obviously I've said some things. Here's the next one. I, I, there's something really cheerful about this one. I don't know why. They look like happy boats. Don't they look like they're floating happy boats? <laughs> This is my art is subjective. I don't know why this particular painting makes me happy, but it does. I really like those red accents and it makes my eye kind of jump around a little bit. There's, look at, oh wow, look at the space created there. I mean, there's a lot of horizontal going on, but then those verticals are really, really important too. I don't know what it is about this painting that I, I really like. And, and you know, there is no tube you can open that, that is a tube of wet. You know, you have to produce mist. You can't buy a tube of mist, a tube of wet, a tube of wind. You know, you can't buy these things. you got to create these effects. And I, I think this person did. Look at those quiet reflections in the, in the water. Now, here is a person who is kind of doing this patchwork work, which... It's just amazing to me that somebody can do this. It, it really is. And in our first episode, the one previous to this, we also had someone who took on sewing in a very different way. It's, I, I find it kind of fascinating. That's kind of delightful. I do not know how you judge this against painting, however. I, I just don't. And I know that it's landscape artist of the year, and art is all mediums. It can be, you know, any way that you make uh, create something from your head that can be displayed on a wall or not even displayed on a wall. It's, it's art. So, wow. It's just amazing that her brain works that way. My brain does not work this way. <laughs> uh, but it's really effective in terms of showing us how um, color and shape matter and value matters. And the pattern really doesn't. Now, this one is so much like the 
one we saw previously because they took on the exact same scene and it has some similarities. I don't think it's as sophisticated as the one that came up earlier, but I enjoy it equally as much. I really hope that this one makes it to the semifinals, but I'm, I'm not at all sure that it will. Yeah, wow. Boy, if it was trimmed, to, that, that's perfection to me <laughs> in terms of design elements and, and composition. I really like it when things go off the canvas. Look at that. It just gets better when you come in closer. And now we will find out who... Remember, they're going to pick three people to be in the semifinals for today, but only one will go forward, forward to the semifinals of this season. So the judging begins, and all artists are lined up on the beach, which looks really strange after seeing them in the studio when it came to Portrait Artist of the Year. Looks like the sun did manage to come out when it got to be near the end of the day. How exhausting this would be. you got to travel to this place. Bring all your things. Wow. Yeah, really amazing that these, these folks are able to do it. Here's our first one up. Um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one very much, and we talked about the reasons why. Yeah, it doesn't disappoint at all. I do like that they included the sand in the front as a diagonal. We've talked about diagonals before in Episode 1, how important they are when you have a really horizontal landscape, a diagonal can be a dynamic element and can give you a, a greater feeling of space. See, this one doesn't have that sand in front, so you just don't get the same feeling of space. But it, it doesn't matter. That's, uh, but you see how similar they are? The one that we just saw on this one? They are really similar. It's sort of like, um, you know, vanilla and chocolate. So anyway, that's a bad analogy. And here's the last one. This is really really carefully observed. Boy, I can't get over the sky and the sea in this one because hey, I, there's just a, such a subtle difference and it would have made such a difference if they had if they had not been as sensitive as they were. Now we will look at the absolute final judging. Did I already say final judging? Well, the judging began, that's right. Now we have the final judging and what we do is we get to see the painting that they did in order to be on the program is on the left so they had unlimited time to do that one. And then the painting that they did today in four hours is on the right. So we're looking for consistency of style. And can they manage the final commission, which is a 10,000 pound commission that will hang in an art in a gallery. Uh, looks like she's very much up to the task. I really enjoy that nighttime one. Here's the next one. Oh, I didn't realize it was the fellow that did that car. Yeah, that, that that might be my favorite one of the day. I'm not, that's a, simply because of the sand. I just think that added an element that creates more space and shows consistency of style and sure, sure shows consistency of palette. Sometimes an artist is really known just by their signature palette, meaning the colors they use. Oh, the pier, okay. Now I understand why this would be his. Oh, I think they're going to pick this one because the judge, one of the judges showed a particular bias at the beginning about the pier painting. So I think it might be this one that's the winner, but hashtag Joe is always wrong. So let's see what happens. The winner is, dun, 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 dun. we're about to find out. The winner is, oh, oh, I'm so surprised. Huh. But I'm happy too. I really want to see more from this person. I really, really, really like that, that work a great deal. And let's just look back one second to see what they did as their entry piece that got them onto the program. Oh, it, see, it's the peer guy. I thought so. Sometimes the judges will kind of show who their favorites are or the camera will linger on their favorites more. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint sweat, mask for value, mix for color. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.